Hey guys, Dr. Bobby here. Listen, I was motivated to make this video because by the time you see this, the Food and Drug Administration will have already approved the use of the Pfizer uh, COVID-19 vaccine uh, in the fight against the coronavirus. And this is obviously of extreme importance to all of us from a public health standpoint. And uh, I've received a lot of questions about what my thoughts are in relation to the vaccine, whether or not I believe it to be safe and uh, whether or not I plan on getting it. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to use my platform to be able to provide some educational points. So I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about exactly what we know, what we don't know, and um, whether or not I plan on getting the vaccine and what my thoughts are in regards to whether or not you should consider getting the COVID-19 vaccine. <music> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Bobby. I am a board certified anesthesiologist and, you know, I'm a patient advocate at heart. Uh, I am interested in ensuring that you have the information necessary in order to make the absolute best and most informed decisions that you can in regards to your health care. And on this channel, we talk about a lot of things. We talk about education. We talk about motivation. We talk about personal finance, but we try to do it in a way that's not off-putting and in a way that provides you with information to be able to go forward and be your best self. So if you find that to be helpful and you find that to be something you're interested in, please feel free to like, share, subscribe to the channel. So before we go any further, it's important for us to talk about exactly what we know in regards to the coronavirus vaccine. The coronavirus vaccine is different than traditional vaccines in that it is what we call an mRNA vaccine. The way in which this vaccine works is a little bit different. So we first have to know exactly how coronavirus infects the human body. So basically, the coronavirus uses what we call spike proteins to attach itself to a human cell, ripping open that human cell in order to gain access and utilize what's inside the cell to replicate and infect the body with the coronavirus. The pharmaceutical company Pfizer was able to derive the genetic code of these proteins and isolate that so that we can basically use that mRNA sequence to inject as a vaccine into our own bodies such that our cells take up that mRNA vaccine and develop um, an antigen to show our uh, immune system so that we develop antibodies against that spike protein. Once we have enough antibodies against that spike protein, our bodies are able to recognize it once we are uh, confronted with the normal coronavirus and that coronavirus is not able to attach itself to our cells because we um, are able to block the ability for those spike proteins to attach themselves. So I think it's important for us to talk about exactly what we know about the coronavirus vaccine. The coronavirus vaccine started its first phase one clinical trials back in March of 2020. Now, I got my notes here, so you'll see me look down every now and then because I want to make sure that I give you all of the appropriate information. So they started these trials back in March of 2020. They started initially with a cohort of about 45 patients, so a very small cohort initially, um, ages 18 to 55. So they didn't test people over 55 initially. So 18 to 55, they gave each one of these participants two doses that were separated by a number of weeks. They then assessed each patient for the development of antibodies against the coronavirus and also assessed them to ensure their safety, that they did not have any major side effects that would be both life-threatening or otherwise, and they documented those. So long story short, uh, the first 45 patients elicited appropriate immunity to the COVID-19 virus, and they also had very little in the way of side effects. So they had no major side effects. It says that the virus was, uh, that the vaccine was well tolerated amongst patients and that um, greater than 50% of patients developed only mild side effects. And by mild, we mean particularly fatigue, headache, chills, and injection site pain. So with such a small group of patients, obviously you can't generalize that information to a larger group of people. You need more patients, you need more time to be able to test to ensure that the vaccine is indeed safe and efficacious amongst more people so that you can generalize that to the population. So they continue to enroll patients in these trials and to date have tested over 43,000 patients. And in that 43,000 patients ages 18 to greater than 65, they found that 
um, greater than 95% uh, efficacy um, against the COVID-19 virus. So greater than 95% of patients were able to amount an appropriate immune response that, that only caused uh, at most mild illness to COVID-19 and not severe hospitalization, ICU admissions, and death like we have right now. And um, the uh, efficacy or the development of antibodies has developed as quickly as uh, 28 days after the first dose. So this is super important because typically you're going to have two doses that will lead to that 95% efficacy that are separated by at least about three weeks. It's also important to note that um, uh, these, uh, this efficacy, this 95% uh, patients developing antibodies against COVID um, have, uh, is consistent amongst age, gender, race, and ethnicity. So this is non-respect to what your race is, it's non-respect to how old you are, and it's non-respect to whether or not you're a man or a woman. So, uh, and patients who are over 65, there's over a 94% efficacy um, to the development of antibodies against COVID-19. So they've been able to demonstrate in a very large cohort of patients that this um, virus absolutely causes antibody production against the COVID-19 virus. Um, in terms of side effects that patients have reported, um, there have been no major side effects that were life-threatening um, to this virus. Um, the primary side effects, 2% of patients developed fever, excuse me, 2% of patients developed fatigue, 3.8% uh, of patients developed headache, and you had a smaller cohort of patients who developed uh, pain at injection site and uh, fever chills. And this can uh, sort of be um, surmounted to the immune response. Uh, whenever you get the flu vaccine or whenever you get other vaccines, you can also have uh, mild fever and you can also just not feel very well. Developing immunity is something that can cause a symptom. But uh, in terms of uh, the overall safety and efficacy of the med of the COVID-19 vaccine, it's been pretty clear based on the vast number of patients that have been tested uh, and the lack of major life-threatening complications that, uh, in general, this safety and efficacy can be generalized to um, the larger population and that this indeed... Um, is uh, of greater benefit than uh, risk to patients who are vulnerable to COVID-19. So as you can see, the data is the data. Patients typically did not have severe side effects from the vaccine and they were able to elicit an appropriate immune response. This is extremely promising in terms of uh, being able to find something that will combat the um, level of hospitalization and the level of, of morbidity and mortality that's been associated with COVID. So we're moving in the right direction in that regard. Now, just as we talk about the things that we know, there are things that we don't know. While we have data to suggest that this uh, vaccine is indeed safe and efficacious for uh, the general population, it's important to note that we have uh, data that is lacking in the pediatric population. So in children, this drug has not been tested um, very uh, widely in the pediatric population. Additionally, the vaccine has not been tested extensively in pregnant women, and the uh, data uh, for fetal transmission of, uh, of antibodies, etc., has not been tested enough to know exactly how this vaccine would affect a pregnant woman. And overall, we don't know the information in terms of the long-term impact of um, the vaccine on our health in general. And that's primarily because we've spent a lot of time ensuring safety and efficacy so that we at least have something to help decrease the amount of morbidity and mortality that we have um, seen with this virus in such a short period of time. So my thoughts on this entire thing. I believe that Pfizer has clearly shown that the COVID-19 vaccine is indeed safe and efficacious based on the data that has been presented to the public. They have been able to show generalizability by testing a very large cohort of diverse patients. They have been able to clearly show that patients have developed appropriate immune response to the development of COVID-19. Uh, they have also been able to show very clearly that patients in general have been 
uh, safely administered this drug and have had very little in the way of side effects. While there are some unknowns, I think that based on uh, the benefit versus the risk of getting the vaccine, I think that we are skewed well into the benefits. So I believe specifically that patients who um, are otherwise vulnerable need to consider getting this vaccine to decrease the risk that they would either be hospitalized or um, die from the virus. People who are frontline healthcare workers who are inundated with personal and occupational exposure risk. I think that you all should consider uh, potentially getting this vaccine. Obviously, there's more uh, data points that will need to be um, tabulated and there's more longitudinal studies in regards to the medication, but we're in the thick of it right now. We are in a pandemic and we are in a situation where the healthcare system is being taxed exponentially, where both healthcare workers and our normal everyday people are seeing death and, and uh, otherwise infection um, in rates that are pretty astronomical. In terms of uh, physicians, in terms of myself, um, I absolutely will be getting this vaccine. Um, I'm an anesthesiologist and I come into contact with all types of patients. I manage airways every single day and that puts me at an increased risk of developing COVID-19 and I would much rather deal with the potential um, small side effects of the vaccine like headache, fever, um, chills. I would rather deal with these things than to deal with the potential um, of uh, an int a prolonged intubation or prolonged course in ICU or even my own death from occupational exposure. So I believe personally that the benefits outweigh the risk. Again, I think that uh, it all comes down to personal choice, but I believe based on my opinion as a physician and based on the data that I've been able to read that the vaccine um, is uh, definitely safe and efficacious um, for um, providing immunity to um, COVID-19. While there are some things we do not know, I believe that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risk. Listen guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This by no means is a comprehensive video in regards to the pathophysiology of COVID-19 or all the voluminous amounts of data that were used to uh, determine the safety and efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine. I only wanted to provide some nuts and bolts and information to be able to help you guys make a better decision in regards to what you're going to decide. I would like to implore any black or brown person who is uh, in a vulnerable population, any person who otherwise has predisposing health conditions or who are frontline workers and at increased risk for developing COVID-19 to strongly consider getting the vaccine to decrease your risk of morbidity and mortality against the COVID-19 vaccine. And by all means, please feel free to share this video with anybody who you believe needs to get more education on the vaccine. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.